Hey everyone. Okay, so obviously the first thing to talk about is the episode basically introduces us to the real Dr. Vegapunk. And right out of the gate, I have to ask a very simple question, to, and this is one is mostly for, for any anime-only people that watch my episode reviews, which is, what are your thoughts on the reveal? Because the thing that does intrigue me about this episode are the circumstances it's operating under, which is, from my perspective, the opening having already revealed what Vegapunk looks like, it's going is kind of ruins the mystery of of what Vegapunk looks like for, for those who haven't read the manga. But I recognize that's my sensibilities as both an anime watcher and a manga reader kind of conflicting with each other. So I'd really like to know what you as just viewers think about the reveal of Vegapunk because I'm, this is kind of one of those intriguing cases where it's like, again, to me, I feel the opening ruins the reveal, but... Uh, that that isn't. I don't think that's necessarily going to be my sa like the same for everyone else. And I really want to know what your thoughts are on it. Um, putting that aside, though, the episode does do something rather intriguing compared to his manga counterpart, which is that in the manga, by the time Oda got to his flashback, this flashback of the aftermath of Ohara, where we see both Dragon and Vegapunk for the first time, Oda dropped all pre Oda like. It was during that moment in the manga where Oda dropped all pretenses of keeping Vegapunk obscured and gave us, like, the full reveal of the man in his younger years, whereas the anime is the one that does go for a little bit more subtle method, keeping him slightly obscured. Like, you can still kind of see, like, features of his... features of him, but he's he is still shadowed, basically. And, and that's kept that way in the anime right up until the point where we do cut back to the present and Vegapunk makes his full introduction to Luffy's group. And again, it's what makes choice... It's it's choices like that made in the op opening even... The, it's, cho it's choices like that that make the choices made in the opening even more intriguing to me because I had assumed Toei spoiling Vegapunk in the opening was there. There's no point to keeping it a secret. Then... That then they then they do this like I'm probably overthinking it, but it does fascinate me of what Toy's logic is in this is in this or in these choices and yeah. Um, also, I may as well mention this before I forget, but supposedly the anime is on break for two weeks after this episode, which I understand, but man, that's going to be a painful two weeks, especially after this episode. Uh, but okay, getting into the actual meat of the episode, it's pretty much like revealed right from the start that, yeah, after Ohara fell, Vegapunk continued on with Ohara's work out of respect for Clover and the other scholars, which led to the now of how Egghead came to be. And, at least from the sounds of it, Dr. Veg Vegapunk this entire time has managed to kind of keep at least the a lot of the secrets or, or, or the or the bare or the base or the streamlined details and origins of these discoveries relatively obscured from the government. But at the same time he recognizes it's going to be hard to keep it a secret much longer. And two and with with this with the revelation of these details, like the two things I really liked that this episode touched on is how Shaka really hammers home on the idea that if the history of the Void Sentry is truly just a theory, then why would the government react in the way they did unless they did in fact know that know it to be true? So it's definitely more than paranoia that drove them to destroy Ohara. And I I really like how and one thing I really liked in this part is I really liked how Robin's whole conversation with the Vegapunk, he doesn't even talk down to Robin and just gives her the straight-up truth about what happened that day and how she ends up kind of thankful for what he had done and made their... And for her, he, Vegapunk made their sacrifices worth something. I, I do appreciate just how, how that sort of mutual sort of thankfulness and respect kind of comes through in this in this conversation. Um, but, uh, but, but even more than that, um, that, <clears throat> and, but, but even more, just, just from getting all this details, it's, and uh, I also, re I also really like that when, sh when you, when you see Shaka telling this story about Clover, he noted that one of the great tragedies of the world as it exists today and of Ohara was Clover's talent and his lust for knowledge, which in itself, and how that led to what happened to Ohara, but, and which in itself makes him realize his talent as the greatest mind in the world 
is also what is going to cause his own death and lead Egghead down the same path of destruction that Ohara went through. Like, it's that, it's it's that one. It's that sort of like like from like from self realization and actualization. You could say that of 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 a uh, of Vegapunk realizing that never ending cycle of how out of fear humans tend to act irrationally towards towards the thing towards the things and people towards people who maybe are just trying to understand the world so we can learn from its mistakes and prevent ourselves from repeating them but ultimately like by again by ironic virtue it's it's through that same fear and paranoia that we still end up repeating those mistakes and shunning and and considering those those who are just trying to learn from that history as as pariahs, it's again, it's it's a never-ending cycle that I really like. Like that, it's a never-ending cycle that I really like to see, like Vega Punk kind of realize about. Um, but and but and yeah, there's and yeah, outside of that fact, there's not. I I, I will I will admit too. Uh, the one thing, and this is gonna sound like a nitpick, but the one thing I I kind of wish we. I kind of wish we'd be able to drive, dive a little bit more into this episode. Was I want? I wanted to get more of that, uh, of 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 the whole like po post post uh, Buster Call Ohara, post history of post history with um with Dragon and with with Dragon and uh, and Vegapunk because in this episode they, they pretty much just kind of tease dragons out in this episode, but they don't actually um. But they don't actually touch on like how Vegapunk and Dragon know each other necessarily. But I think, but again, as shown with the preview, they're going to be covering that next week. So it's like, so again, that in itself is kind of one of the things that why I said, like that next week's episode is going to be a pain to wait for for two weeks. Um, but and but yeah, outside of that, there's not really that much more to talk about with this episode, although. I think I will mention something that completely flew over my head when reading this in the manga for the first time, but I can see it more so now, which is supposedly Oda had based Vegapunk's design off Albert Einstein, and honestly, I can really see it just from revisiting this ep just from revisiting this content in this episode, not just with Vegapunk's design, but also with his personality and how just giddy and excited Vegapunk is in order to meet Luffy and how show him his inventions and his technology and how how they work which itself though does make you kind of really ponder how can someone like this be the same person who we've perceived as the evil bastard who created the pacifistas and made kuma into a motionless shell and knowing that there is some something else knowing knowing that there is something else i want to talk about with vegapunk but I do want to wait at least one more episode, one more episode before going into detail about it because it has to do with a bit of a misconception I had, I had about, I had created about Vegapunk when I first read this part of the story in the manga, but now my opinion, let's just say, has vastly shifted over, shifted since then. Like, so yeah, uh, and on a final note, I also really like how to, how there are a lot of aesthetic details about the episode used to provide, like, a unique perspective or transition, like the video game graphics used when Shaka described the history of the Void Century and the ba the battle of the Twenty Kingdoms waged against the Lost Kingdom, or even just how the episode kind of transitioned into the title card of Vegapunk's name by, ty by, by, by creating this sort of effect of, of, like, typing Vegapunk's name on a computer screen and having that, and then revealing the title card from there, like, again, it's, it's a very, it's very unique little details like that that I think did make the episode stand out a little bit, but, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Analyst Crunch Roll, be sure to notification your bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys, Dark Knight of Night, signing off, later, everyone.